once you've practiced a limited palette, it's actually really fun to just go out into the field, go outdoors, just with a very limited number of colors. You've already sort of seen what their potential is if you've practiced the color wheels and practiced what the neutrals might be. So going out with a yellow, a red, and a blue. And what I like to do sometimes is just go and make a really quick linear sketch, maybe a bit of a tonal sketch. I love using ballpoint pen. This is an example of that. And then come in and you can, a lot of artists just label colors. Like I have turquoise, gold, yellow, blue, green, light ochre with arrows pointing to those zones. But then what I also did is I went in and I made little notations, just really simple notations about the colors I was seeing. I didn't do the full painting on location, I just did that. And then I made a tiny, look at, I mean, compared to my hand, this is a tiny little sketch on location, just from what I'm seeing and just from the colors that I'm discerning when I'm out there. And what's great about making a tiny sketch like this is it simplifies things, it's really fast. This probably took me about three minutes to put down. And I don't get all futzy with all the little details. So collecting color data in this way can be really, really liberating. Another possibility when you're collecting color data, which I often do, this is a study I did in Italy last summer, is to work on the piece, but then on the bottom, show the work. Like remember in math class when you, you were a kid, they said show the work. So I love the data. I love as I'm painting, I don't know what the color, if it's going to work on my palette right off the bat. So I'll make little notations on the side to just until I get the color I want and then I'll put it up on the painting. So this painting is a combination of watercolor in some of these more transparent areas and gouache in some of the areas that are a bit more opaque. This is also an example of my process when I'm out working outdoors. I'll often put down the date and the time of day, but also make a little haiku uh, to center and arrive, even before I start the sketch. So this haiku says, sketching on the hill, shaded by the olive tree, ambition loosens. So this is just another way to journal and record the experience. And then coming back to the studio, you have all of these moments, the haiku, the color data, the small sketch to work from for a larger painting. Another fun possibility is looking at a master painting. So this is a Corot, I love Corot. So this is a Corot landscape. And my idea of fun is to take a landscape like this and then make a color data chart from it. So every color that I discerned in the Corot is actually in one of these little gridded uh, color swatches. And notice along the side how I've included all my trials. So trials are okay. Actually, trials are beautiful because it shows that you know, you're know you trying again and again to try to get the right color. And then as soon as I got the right color, I went ahead and I put it down on this grid. And you can make grids like this by using sort of um, painter's tape, just taping it off. And then when you're done with all the color segments, you peel it off and you can get a grid like that. And then from that, painting or from that data, I was able to actually do a little bit of a copy um, and both linear and painterly. Uh, this is Avignon from the West uh, and I worked from the original Corot. So this is actually a great exercise if you feel up for it to practice color, um, looking at a master painting and even if you just did this part, looking at a master painting and put the data down, that's a really great way to practice color. And again, when you're out in the field or even if you're working from a photograph, you can do something looser like this, really putting down the colors that you see along the side of the picture. And it doesn't matter that you show the work. In fact, I think that's what often makes it feel more human and more beautiful. So. This idea of collecting color data 
for the sake of practicing mixing color, but also for the sake of the freshness and the comparison that you're making to your motif. So give it a try, whether a loose effect like this seems more pertinent to what you might like, or even something more systematic like this, where you're looking at a photo, or you're looking out at nature, or you're looking at a master study, just to continue to practice color mixing and also mimicking how your motif is inspiring you with color.